Also in Japan, exit polls show a snap election gamble has paid off for Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Polls project Abe's ruling coalition has won a resounding victory. A win will make him Japan's longest serving Prime Minister. Abe is aiming for a two thirds majority needed to make changes to the country's constitution. Amy Katarinak is a Japanese politics scholar at a university in New York. She joins me now. Good to speak to you. So it appears that Abe is on track for supermajority victory. What worked in his favor? Um, he is on track for a uh, supermajority, and that's very important right now because the Prime Minister Abe uh, would like to revise the constitution. So he needs a two thirds majority in the lower chamber, chamber in order to do that. And the, the issue of constitutional revision has been a very big one in this election, and he will definitely claim a mandate after the election to, to revise the constitution. However, it's not so easy. Uh, he needs two thirds in both houses of the Diet, uh, the Japan's parliament, and he also needs to get a majority in a popular referendum. But the issue has been a big one in this election, yes. And, and what is the importance really of achieving that supermajority? So in order to, so Japan's constitution is one of the oldest in the world. I think it might be the oldest in the world that hasn't been revised. And in the constitution, Japan rejects uh, war as an instrument of state policy and bans itself or uh, pledges to never maintain war potential. So it's commonly known throughout the world, this is Article 9, uh, Japan's pacifist constitution that's never been revised. The government over time has sort of changed uh, what the co constitution, um, the interpretation of what the constitution allows Japan to do and what it doesn't allow Japan to do. So in the 1950s, the Japanese government said, sure, we're not allowed to maintain war potential. The constitution says we can't maintain war potential, but we are allowed to have a force for self-defense. So Japan has a self-defense forces, it doesn't have a military, but what the Prime Minister would like to do is actually add a clause to the constitution to say that Japan's self-defense forces is constitutional. That's and, what he would like to do. And if he, um, if he changes the constitution, he wants Japanese troops to be deployed easily as part of international missions with its allies around the globe. Why does he want that? Well, I think he would like Japan's uh, presence to be more um, he would like to have a, a, a larger global security role for Japan. Um, he also would like to strengthen Japan's relationship with the United States. So Japan has an alliance with the United States. Uh, the United States uh, is, is mandated according to the terms of the alliance to defend Japan. But Japan has the only thing Japan does for the United States, or the only thing traditionally Japan has to do for the United States is to allow the United States bases uh, in Japan. And I think Abe would like Japan to, to be able to play a, a bigger security role in the United States, uh, for the United States uh, abroad. So as you said, with the new proposed changes, is Japan somewhere agreeing with US idea of collective defense? Yes, I think Abe would like Japan to be a security partner of the United States that's sort of at the same status as Great Britain or other American allies. But the Constitution traditionally has been, uh, has made it much, much more difficult for Japan to do that. Um, so in this election, I think uh, the Prime Minister is going to claim the mandate for constitutional revision, uh, but it's still very difficult. He has to get two thirds of the legislators in both houses of the Diet to agree to this, and then he has to put it to the public uh, in a referendum, and a majority of people has to have to say yes to the proposed revision in the referendum as well. Well, we have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for joining us on TRT World, Amy Katalinak. Thank you.